Thanks so much for patching into another Wednesday wake up. We're cruising our way through John, uh, still on chapter 14. Uh, and I'd like to focus on a couple points. Um, some things that we've talked about in the past, um, but then a new thing that Jesus promises today. The first is the, the intentionality of Jesus. Um, it's always been said that there's nothing wasted in scripture. And I think I have a, an example that, that internalizes that, that makes that real for us uh, so that we get a better idea of the intentionality of Jesus, how focused he is on his message, especially today and especially at this point in his public ministry. Uh, the other is the, the promise that he gives us uh, in the way of the Holy Spirit uh, and the importance of that. Uh, it's, it's something that's been mentioned in the past, um, but now he gets uh, serious. He gives it a name, um, calls it the advocate, the, the, the paraclete in original uh, Greek. And we're going to ch chat about that as well. Are you saying something, Gary? Am I, am I sounding okay? Good. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I thought I saw some arms waving. I wanted to make sure I wasn't uh, on mute. Okay, so let's dive into God's word. Uh, this is chapter 14, uh, verses 15 through 27. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, those who love me will keep my word. And my father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the father who sent me. I've said these things to you while I'm still with you. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So the first part is that intentionality piece. Uh, remember how I mentioned that, um, you know, this is after uh, the, the Lord's Supper, after the obvious denial by Judas, the, uh, the breaking of Jesus' heart um, even, even though his heart was broken, he starts his farewell address, and this is still continues that farewell address. Um, and he, he focuses on what his disciples will need, essentially what we will need in, in his absence. Uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't care about his own broken heart. He cares about the broken heart of his disciples, and we see that here. And, and although I've said this, and I've said that, you know, you could always, every bit of of scripture is is worthy, and Jesus even says that every uh, every jot and tittle. If you look at the um, uh, the King James version, it says, you know, every little piece of scripture will be fulfilled. The, those jot and tittle is like the littlest piece of of scripture. In, in Hebrew, it's the yod. It's basically it looks like a comma to us, uh, but it's a letter in Hebrew. He said even the the littlest letter of God's law will be fulfilled. So everything in God's word is worthy. And so everything that Jesus says and teaches is worthy and, and, and intentional. And the, the way that, that that came to me this week is, is what would happen and heaven forbid, but what would happen if, if you went to the doctor and the doctor said that you had limited time, that you had a, uh, a condition, a disease, something that, that said that you only have so many days, maybe so many hours to live. How would you, how would you adjust your life accordingly? And, it reminds me of this, uh, this old Tim McGraw song, um, uh, basically about the same thing. He asked someone, um, you know, what, like, how did you, how did you react 
to that to those doctors' uh, words, and, and the chorus goes something like, uh, um, "I went skydiving, I went uh, Rocky Mountain climbing, I went 2.7 seconds on a bull named Fu Manchu." Right, so he did all the things that he wanted to do. He he healed relationships. He 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 lived his life intentionally. Um, so I guess I could relate to some of those. I think I'd go skydiving and maybe uh, definitely Rocky Mountain climbing. I'm not sure if I'd go bull riding, but um, you get the idea, right? So what would that mean to you to have limited time? Well, how focused would you be? And, and understand that Jesus knew that his end was coming. It was, it was just a matter of hours. Um, but unlike us, where we may get that, those, you know, those words from a doctor and then all of a sudden change our perspective, for Jesus' entire existence, he had that perspective. From the moment he was born, he knew his intention. He knew that his life was limited and everything that he did was intentional. And I think that, that if you keep that in mind, that leads a lot to, to why he, he does what he does, why he says what he says. And so these words are intentional. It's to, it's to relay, to give those life-saving directions to those disciples and to us. And in this passage, he talks about um, some, some pieces he repeats many times. And John captures this not only in the Gospel of John, but in one of his letters, um, what it means to, to live that intentional life for ourselves. What does it mean to, to build that relationship, to hold that relationship, to solidify that relationship with God? He says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And he says, they who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. Those who love me will keep my word, another word for commandments, right? And then in, in John, uh, uh, 1 John, it says, by this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. You catching the message here? It's obviously repeated. And what I don't want you to take from this is Jesus wasn't just the next list of to-dos, the next list of laws from, from God. I mean, God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, and, and all of the, the laws in the Old Testament were those first, those first commandments, those first covenants uh, with God's people. Jesus didn't just add to that list or didn't replace that list with a whole bunch of more to-dos. These commandments or these words mean so much more. And that's what God wants us to follow. It's not you know, following a bunch of uh, rules. And if you follow them, you go to heaven. Because, and the reason why I say this is, is intentional too. It says, those who love me will keep my word. The, the Greek behind that is lagos. So they, those who love me, those who, who um, you know, want to, to build that relationship and solidify that relationship with God will keep God's word. Uh, that lagos. If you recall from the very beginning of, of John, it says, in the beginning was the word, Lagos, and the word was God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And so what Jesus is saying is that, is that I, Jesus, have, have given you an example of which to follow. I am the word of God. My, my very presence, my very being, my, my teachings that I gave you, the miracles that I showed you are a revelation of God. And so those who love me, if you love me, if you love God, you're going to do as I do. You're going to keep my word. You're going to keep my commandments. You're going to be as best as you can an image of me. So what God wants us to do to, to say, if you truly love me, you will, you will be like my son. You will, you will be the word of God in this world today. You'll be a revelation of God to those around you by being as Jesus was, being the Lagos, being the word of God. Now that's a pretty tall order, right? And I know that for me, that's, a, that's not something I can easily achieve on a daily basis, but this is where in God's grace, Jesus comes through again and says, I know this is a tall order. I know that I'm telling you that without any, any uh, not hedging words here, you have to keep God's commandments. You have to keep God's word. You have to be like me. And in God's grace, he's saying, I know you're going to need help. I'm not going to go send you off riding your, 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 your two-wheeler all by yourself and have you crash. I'm going to leave you a Holy Spirit. I'm going to leave you a counselor. 
Now, in, in my translation, it says advocate. Again, that's, that's parakletos is the, the original Greek. It's translated as advocate. It's translated as comforter, as counselor, um, advocate. In my translation, it's the Holy Spirit. And what God is saying through Jesus is that God is going to, to leave himself. God is going to leave God's self in the form of the Holy Spirit. Now, what's interesting here is that is that Jesus says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate. So he will give you another advocate, another Holy Spirit. Now, first of all, let's just talk about the what is that advocate? Hey, Scott. Um, what does that advocate or counselor mean? There's if, if you translate a counselor, it's not like a, a camp counselor, it's not a marriage counselor, it's more of a legal counselor. So if you imagine someone um, being accused and and sitting behind the desk like uh, we see on the on these you know law shows, and and the judge is is asking them to defend themselves, and a legal counselor goes and whispers in their ear something to say, and they 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 take that that wise counsel and and give their defense. That's what this advocate will do. That's. That's if, if you have a good legal counsel, then they're going to um, get you off on that charge um, and be found innocent and not guilty. And, and God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit are the very best of all uh, advocates, all best of legal counsel. And that's that's the type of counsel that the Holy Spirit provides. The other the other term is uh, translation is comforter. And I don't want you to think about a. Uh, uh, a sheet or a blanket that you put on your bed. I don't want you to think of a comfort food or, or a comforting uh, teddy bear. Uh, we're talking about a comforter in, in the old Elizabethan English. A comforter is, is, a, is someone who protects uh, and keeps you comfort because of that protection. And, and the first thing that pops into my head is, uh, is my dad um, had, these, had these huge mitts, uh, these big hands that um, I don't have. Um, and I never realized that until he, he met uh, one of my roommates in college. And I remember my, my roommate, Tim, after, you know, they, they dropped me off in Queens and went back home again. And Tim and I were talking. He said, man, big Chuck's got some, uh, got, got, yeah, he has some big, big hands, man. Yeah, I, I, I hope you were good when you were a kid because that was supposed to hurt. But those, those big hands never, never hit me. But that's the type of comforter. My dad was was a big teddy bear, but if there's anything that got in the way of my family or threatened my family, he would be right there in the forefront protecting. And that's the type of comforter that 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 Jesus is, is saying that that Holy Spirit will provide. Um, and where was I going before that? Oh my goodness. <laughs> the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send to my name. That's right, the other advocate. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. And so that makes you think, well, what's the first advocate? The first advocate is Jesus. Right? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are all of the same essence. And, and the word behind that um, of another is, is a word that could be translated to mean another of the same kind. And so Jesus is that advocate. Jesus is that model. Jesus is that comforter. Uh, Jesus is that wise counsel, um, and Jesus is saying, I'm not going away. I'm going to leave myself with you, my very essence with you in the form of the Holy Spirit, another counselor of the same type, so to say, and that counselor will be with you forever, and the world won't see it, but you will, because if you keep my commandments, if you live the way I want you to live, the way God wants you to live, we want to live in the model of Jesus, I will never be far away. I will always be with you. And so the intentionality of Jesus is seen, the, the gift of the Holy Spirit is seen, and that's what we're left with today to, to understand, okay, do I want to have that relationship with the very creator of the universe um, by living the best way we can in the form of Jesus? I would say yes. That's what we want, um, and the promise of God can never be denied. Um, it's something that that he would never lie about. The, the, the comforter, the counselor, the, the advocate will be with us forever. And we will always be able to see him if we just live and keep God's word, keep God's commandments. And so let's wrap it up and, and ask for that help. Holy Spirit, uh, God, Jesus, we thank you for your presence right here today. Um, 
please give us the strength to, to follow your lead, to follow your word and your commandments, to live as Jesus lived, to be the light in the world, to be the counsel for others uh, when they need to know your presence in this world today. We pray this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you all for tashing in once again. Let me get you off mute and we'll chat.